Welcome to the tutorial importing a sound. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to enhance your animation by adding sound to it. You might add sound for several different reasons. You could add sound as a sound effect for an action that's occurring in your animation. You can add music as a soundtrack for the background or you can add dialogue as speech for what your characters are saying. So Animate and Animate Pro provide you with a sound editor where you can do things like trim your sound or loop it you can also synchronize your sound to your animation. But in general, it's recommended that if you need to make more complicated edits, that you do it in a third-party software and then bring it into Animate or Animate Pro. So there are several ways that you can import a sound file into Animate or Animate Pro. The most obvious being going to the file menu at the top and selecting Import Sound. So a browser window then appears allowing you to search for a sound somewhere on your computer. And as you can see, the sound file appears in your timeline view layer stack, and you can see it at the top here, and it's indicated by a musical note. As well as instead of a show hide box with a check mark, you get a mute, so an on or off for the sound. Um, a second way that you can import sound is to go to the timeline view menu, and I believe this is just for Pro, and you go to import sounds. And as you can see, you're also able to import more than one sound. And let's import it a third way. And you can do this through the X sheet. So I'm going to bring up the X sheet. Um, and you can go to the X sheets view menu and select file import sounds. And once again, that's only for Animate Pro. And then if we scroll across the X sheet, you'll see that the three sounds that I imported are indicated by this dark gray. So their columns are colored in a darker gray than the rest of the columns here. And we're going to get more into the way that sound is displayed in both the X sheet and the timeline uh, very soon. So in case I forgot to mention it, the three file types that you can import into Animate or Animate Pro are waves. AIFFs and MP3s. So I actually imported two waves in an MP3 um, for this example. So let's take a look at the layer properties um, for these sounds. So let's click on one and I'm going to bring up the layer properties here. So we have quite a few different options here. The first one at the top is the mute button, so the mute on off, which is the same thing as this icon here at the end of the sound layer. So as you can see, you can control it from either place, the layer or from the layer properties panel. Um, here we have the name of your sound file. Clicking this button brings up the sound editor and we're going to go into greater detail about the sound editor quite soon. Here's where the start and stop frame for your sound are indicate. So if your sound file is very short, it'll end before the end of your scene. And if your scene is very short or shorter than the length of your sound file, then your sound file might potentially get cut off. And these are the reasons that you might want to edit your sound a bit um, and also decide where your start frame and stop frame are. So this last section below is devoted exclusively to lip syncing. And I'm going to do a video just on lip syncing. So if you click on the first button that says detect, you'll launch the automated lip sync detection. And if you click on the second button that says map, you'll launch the map lip sync dialog. Um, and this is to do the lip syncing automatically um, to allow the software to do it um, while the mapping um, is a more manual procedure. So once you've done this with a file that you've brought in that has just dialog, you'll be able to click on these thumbnails to change the phenome associated with a specific frame. So now let's take a look at the different sound displays. So to do this, let's go back to the X sheet and let's scroll over to our three sound columns here, one of them being selected, and you right click on the column header. You can select your view options by going to sound display and then selecting one of the three options, either sound name, which is the selection that's currently being used, uh, mouth shapes, or waveforms. 
So let's click on mouse shapes. So obviously because we haven't done the um, lip sync detection and this is actually not meant for lip sync detection, there's lots of background sound and noise in this, so this would not be a good example. But if we scroll down, you'll see that it's just put to the default um, phenome of X, which is this last one here, so it doesn't really mean anything. Um, if we do it again though, and we go to sound display and go to waveform, you'll see the actual waveform um, displayed vertically in the column the same way that you see it displayed horizontally in the timeline. You can also hover the cursor of your mouse over the icon of the waveform with the magnifying glass and you'll see your cursor change into a hand with a double headed arrow. If you scroll back or forth, you can essentially zoom in or zoom out on your waveform. So let's click on our uh, column header one more time and select our default setting of sound display, sound name. And if you select this, you can see the name of your sound file listed all the way down the column. Okay, so to even enable sound playback, uh, there's a button at the top here in the playback toolbar that you have to click, and it's this one in the middle. So right now, if I clicked on the play button, you wouldn't hear any sound. Everything is silent. But then if I click on the enable sound button and click on the play button, you hear all sorts of noise, and um, that's because there's two sound effects and uh, an actual song listed in my column. So I can mute two of those, bring my playhead back to the front, and play one more time. And now you hear just one of the sound effects. Um, there are two other ways that you can play your animation. The first one being if you just hit the keyboard shortcut Enter. You can hit Enter again to stop the playback. Or you could go to the top and go to play, play. And that also plays your scene forward. You can also loop a sound by clicking on this button here, the loop button. And if you recall from a previous tutorial, you can move the red bracket to shorten the length of your scene, but you can move these little black triangles to shorten the length of your playback sequence. So now if I press play, the software just loops that playback again and again. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is sound scrubbing. Um, and sound scrubbing is a way of using your red playhead to go back and forth along a sample of sound that's usually dialogue so that you can hear it more precisely. And you call it scrubbing because this action of moving back and forth looks like a brush scrubbing a floor. And you're able to do all of this in real time. So in order to enable the sound scrubbing option, you have to go to the top and click on this button here. These two buttons don't necessarily affect each other. For example, if I have the sound scrubbing button turned off and I move my playhead across, you can't hear anything even though the sound button is enabled. If I turn this off but turn the sound scrubbing on, all of a sudden you can hear your sound in real time as you move your playhead back and forth. And if you have them both on, um, you can hear the sound scrubbing or you can play. So you can do either. So once again, those two um, are relatively unrelated. And just to let you know, there are two other ways that you can um, enable the sound scrubbing, and you can do that by either right-clicking on this bar here on the timeline and selecting Enable Sound Scrubbing, or you can go to the top and select Play Enable Sound Scrubbing. And right now they're both checked off because um, the sound scrubbing button is depressed. So that's it for the tutorial importing a sound. Stay tuned for the next tutorial editing a sound file.